Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on teaching you about numeral systems, different numeral systems. Um, of course, we'll go over what the hell a numeral system is, but just um, a quick starter. I'm using obviously uh, a Keynote pow slash PowerPoint system to um, deliver this tutorial series to you. Of uh, this is new to me, of course. I try to make them as best as possible and just leave in the comments or like or dislike whether you enjoy this media median of uh, delivery but uh, without further ado let's get on with numeral systems now a uh, numeral system is a writing system for expressing numbers and you know there's different names for it and several examples of number systems like you know what how you write like one two three one thousand two hundred and thirty four two hundred fifty six um, etc etc now um, each numeral system has um, a certain base of it like decimal is base 10 binary is base 2 and um, hexadecimal is base 16 septum bigesimal is base 27 of course there's a whole flock of other uh, different numeral systems and you know the higher the base is the more capacity the numeral system has so our first example is going to be decimal and there's several examples of decimal and almost every single modern language um, in the modern world has a decimal numeral system and uh... what decimal means well it's base ten you know d e c des decimal it's base ten so about base ten is this graphic shows you that base ten means the ten is the base of an um... an exponent and what that shows you is the different um... places well this would probably show you the different places better so um... The first thing is that in order to figure out the capacity of a certain decimal thing, you take um, the amount of digits in it. So if you had a three-digit decimal number, you would take 10 to the power of 3, which is 1,000. So that means that number can hold 1,000 different numbers, 0 to 999. Since if you actually wanted to go to 1,000, you would have to use four digits, you know, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now, um, if you haven't learned this in any grade or math class already, you know the different places of decimal, the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. Then it goes tenths, hundredths, thousandth, etc. Now, there's other things about it. Um, you know, this is just to show you the different billion, trillion, quadrillion, sextillion, the different names for all the large numbers and such. And here's another thing that especially helps with metric. It shows, you know, the name and what they denote. Like, milli, like a millimeter is one thousandth of a normal meter, a, kilo, a kilometer is a thousand meters, um, and etc. for all those different exponents in scientific notation, if you know what that is. So um, that's how that's how you do that. But let's go on to how you do arithmetic and decimal. Now I hope most of you already know how to do arithmetic and decimal. I mean, you never know, but I'm going to be showing you how to do arithmetic in a whole bunch of different numeral systems, so let's start with addition. The simple problem, you know, um, 8 plus 6 is 14, so you do 4 and you carry the 1, then you do 4 plus 3 plus 1, and that gives you 84. That's how you add in decimal. Then subtraction, just a bit different. 3 minus 9 will leave you with 4, and you have to borrow a number, so it would be 5 plus 3 minus 1, which of course would give you well, 5 minus 3 minus one so five minus four that's one yeah multiplication just a little bit difficult especially when you do you know the multiple digit ones you know first you multiply the top term by the you multiply the top term by each digit of the bottom one and then um, you have to add a zero because uh, you're going to be multiplying 25 by the one in 13 and since it's the in the tens place you have to add a zero to the bottom and put it under the existing one so you know you do math for that Real quick, it's pretty easy, multiplying by 1, and then you have to add those together in order to get the product, and we know how to add, so 25 times 13 is 325. Pretty simple. Division, um, no one really likes division, whether it's long division. There's also synthetic division, but we won't be getting into that since it's just a bit more intrinsic. So, um, what do you do with it? You know, five, uh, 5 goes into 1 zero times, so then you do 5 times 0, and then 1 minus 0, and that'll obviously give you 1. Then you figure out how many times does 5 go into, well, no, first, you carry down the 2. Then how many times does 5 go into 12? Well, it goes into 12 two times. Then you do 12 minus 5 times 2, which is 10. Then you put that into subtraction, and then you do that. You carry down the 8. 5 goes into 28. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 5 goes into 28 20, 
well, I mean, five times, and you and then uh, then you know five times five is twenty five. You subtract that, and you obviously get three. And then since um we kind of run out of room, you have to add an uh, imaginary point zero. Since obviously after every number there's a, an uh, infinite trailing zeros, but we don't put those because you know obviously we don't want to write zeros because there's not significant figures. So now we carry down the zero, and five goes into thirty exactly six times. So now it's point six. And you know, five times six is thirty. Thirty minus thirty is zero. And you keep do you keep um dividing, and you keep doing this until you get the the zero for the multiplication. So that's arithmetic. <laughs> and how how to convert decimal to decimal? Now this is a bit obviously you don't need to convert decimal to decimal. It's ex the most redundant thing probably. But this is basically an outline. Now again, so basically if you want to convert a hundred thousand one hundred twenty three thousand four hundred fifty six. What you would do, you would take each digit in each place and multiply what place it is. So you count from zero on. So six is in the zero place. So six times ten to the power of zero, which is, oh look, it's six. And then you would do then five times ten to the power of one, which is fifty, and so on and so forth. And you end up getting the same number as you had, because converting decimal to decimal is pretty easy. <laughs> and, well, I believe that's it for this episode. Now next we're going to go to, you know, the infamous binary and how that works. I hope you enjoyed this episode, however, and uh, I hope to see you next time for binary and the rest of the tutorial series. And again, please tell me how you like this tutorial. Um, it may have been a bit abstract this time, but we're definitely going to hit a lot of the harder stuff, um, especially with the low capacity numeral systems, such as binary and ternary and um, octal and such. But uh, <laughs> again, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.